Welcome to Dark Days of Helsinki 2017. As you can see, all the gloom and doom has descended. It's all about September gloominess, darkness, death and you know, all that shit. But we also have some great guys here with booze, with tobacco and all the stuff, all the substance you need to do a great rock and roll music or metal as it is the case. So here we have Memoriam. So guys, without further do. Talk or do. <laughs> do? Let's do the introductions. Who wants to go first? Hello, I'm uh, Scott Fairfax, uh, guitarist of Memorium. And I am Carl Willits, and I am the rhythmical shouter of Memorium. So, as um, most of the audience will already know, because you are not like a newcomers of the genre. People know you from different bands, but we are not going to talk about too much in the past. But Memoriam is only like uh, less than two years old. Absolutely. So there's been a lot of, uh, lot of walking to do on your path to this very moment. How would you describe the birth of Memoriam? The birth of Memoriam really came about, as you say, two years ago. Um, we formed as a band primarily in the wake of the tragic loss of uh, Martin Kitty Kearns. He was the drummer of Bolt Thrower. Uh, up to September 2015, uh, I was in a band called Bolt Thrower. Um, and when Martin uh, passed on, you know, I was faced with um, a decision of what I particularly wanted to do with the rest of my life. Um, after a period of... Um, sitting down and contemplating what the future may hold uh you know and being in quite a, a, a dark place really um with no real idea of what was going to happen with me uh in the future i sat down and, and thought right okay the only way that personally i can dig myself out of this hole is to do something positive to create something new and fresh and challenging and exciting and, and try and um, get some joy back into life in a way. Um, the whole experience of losing Martin, a close friend, was, was a very um, sad, uh, depressing experience for everyone involved, obviously. Um, but yeah, so I decided that the one thing in my life that I really enjoy doing and motivates me is being in a band. I really, really wanted to carry on doing a band. Um, so when Bolt Thrower decided that they wanted to put everything on hold and elongate their ideas of thinking about what they want to do for the future, I said, well, I can't really do that. I don't really want to sit around waiting indefinitely for what may happen or may not happen in the future. Uh, I want to get out there. I want to create something. I want to do something. I always wanted to work with my good friend, one of my best friends uh, for 30 years, uh, Mr. Andrew Whale, who was the original drummer of Bolt Thrower. So um, when, you know, I was thinking, what do I want to do? I th the first thing that came into my head was, I want to do something with Whale. I want to do another band. Uh, I want to get Whale involved, back in, getting back on stage, because we had some great times back in the, you know, the early days of doing Bolt Thrower. I want to try and create that joy uh, and that feel of what it was like back then. And of course, we were always going to. I was always going to ask Frank Healy, our bass player. Uh, for thir I've known Frank for thirty years, and um, he's always been a bastard. Uh, <laughs> loves his pork pies, but uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, but um, I, oh, it was always going to be Frank. Whenever I did an, a, a band separately outside of, of Bolt Throw, it was always going to be Frank that was going to be involved in it. We talked about it over our, over thirty years in our you know drunken. Hayes and coming, we've got to form a band, we've got to do something in the future. It just never happened. He was busy doing what he was doing, I was busy doing what I was doing, and it just, it just never happened. And it's almost like Martin's death was a catalyst for us to start something fresh, something new, something exciting, and it's almost like the stars aligned in a positive way. Uh, Frank himself had been recently through um, the loss of his father as well, so he was in a, a pretty dark place as well, and Benediction weren't really doing a lot either, so... So for him, it was a bit of a lifeline. For me, doing it's about a lifeline and for Whale. And then, you know, we thought, right, okay, who, who are we going to get in um, to, to play guitar? And we thought some really, really good guitar players. But then we ended up with this one. 
<laughs> so now, now it's time to move to you. Hello. You've been a, in a very, quite, well, let's say, at least quite a few uh, bands already, despite you being a bit younger than the rest of the yeah, guys. Yeah, a lot younger, yeah. Yeah, so this could be almost your grandpa's. Uh, so great granddad. Is, yeah. <laughs> great granddad, thanks for correcting me. So, what is the story with the uh, British scene and, and all this metal? Like, you have like tens of millions of people, and yet you have um, really tight handful of uh, talented musicians doing this great metal. What is your story and part of this all? Well, I've just, it's all Frank Healy's fault. I was busy in my garage restoring cars and he gave me a phone call. A uh, couple of weeks later, I'm touring South America with Benediction. So that's how it all happened. It was just, it's all a bit weird, to be honest for me. Yeah, because you've been in a lot of bands in the past. Um, yeah, some good notable bands, you know, you've helped with, and they've done okay. But you kind of always, always got to that point in your life where you kind of you'd, you'd stop doing it and you stopped playing guitar. And then, then Frank got in touch and said, "Look, we need someone to help out." He actually, um, he actually said, "Learn 18 songs in two weeks." So I did and ended up in South America with a bunch of hooligans on a tour bus. Which was when was that? Was that 2015? Was it all? So that was a real good experience for me. Um, obviously, being out with Frank because he's always been me, uh, one of my mates. Um, it, 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 the, this band is just full of mates. It's all. It's just a good, real good laugh. We first got together just before the Christmas in 2015. December we had our first little meetup to say just to you know sit down and decide what we were going to do the original conception was to just get in the, the rehearsal room have a laugh every friday play some songs play some cover songs have a laugh yeah just uh, just have a, just, few, beers, have a few beers have a laugh nothing more than that just to cre recreate a bit of joy and fun that we had when we when we all started in bands um maybe do some local gigs we thought yeah but Ruined it yeah. all. The whole thing was ruined. I've got these riffs. Yeah. I think we should do these. Have a little mess about with these, and from that say this has all started. Absolutely, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it all kind of spanned totally out of control from that point onwards. So our original uh, conception of having a nice little band that does cover versions of old punk songs and maybe play some local shows in local pubs and rehearsed and had, had a bit of a dos. Uh, got ruined by um, Scott Fairfax with his new riffs that he came along. Scott, um, basically, over the past 10, 20 years, uh, has been has got a, a library of, of absolutely killer riffs that he's been saving up. And he threw them at us after the first meeting. And um, in the first meeting. He said, I've got some ideas, let's, let's go with it. <clears throat> and he sent them to us the next day and we thought, fuck. That changes everything. Yeah, you know, that it did change the whole concept. And we knew from that point onwards we had something that we could move forward with to create some new music. Ultimately, <clears throat> being in a band, for me, uh, for anyone really, is all about creation, about creativity and making music and and that excitement when it all gels in the rehearsal room and you and you have a song that's that's new and fresh that no one's heard before. That moment is is such a special moment. I think, uh, we had two tracks pretty much nailed in the first rehearsal so like because they're already there they I use Cubase and I sit at home well I did sit at home messing about I like that riff I'll record it and then they turned into tracks and these guys loved them so that's, that's how it all happened do, do you think there's uh, something to do with this guy's uh, age and rigor mortis and you being the old you know the did young guy you, you know like oh, oh, <laughs> I, I, that was a bad remark, but yeah, I wanted to talk about like getting old ages. Oh, we cannot play only simple riffs, and then this young guy with fresh blood and all that dynamic. This dynamic young dude. It's still not really totally complicated stuff. Because what's the fun in that? To be in my, in my eyes, I don't see the point. You can do a million miles an hour. That's no fun. Yeah. This is all about fun, having a laugh. And if you can't play it while you've had a few vodkas, well, there's no point really, to be honest. There is a lot of stuff to you young watchers who want to dream of playing real death metal. Now listen carefully. So, 
the thing is that you guys, British, are known for the black humor, which is a bit common in with Finns as well, yeah. also, and pork pies, yeah. <laughs> but but you also, even though you are people who can laugh at basically everything, you also write topics uh, about dark topics, uh, war, yeah. dis destruction, death, and all kind of shitty things that happened throughout the has happened throughout the history and still going on. What is the story? What keeps the smile on your face when you just go through with these ideas? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the whole essence of being in a band is you've got to enjoy it. It's got to be fun. When the fun stops, that's when it's time to stop. And um, really, that's the bottom line. If regardless of what band you're in or any ever level, that's the, my top tip. Enjoy what you're doing and do it until you stop enjoying it and then move on the lyrical content of the band is you know it's, it's not it's not humorous you know we, we, we don't uh, write about um, you know stupid stuff but yeah, we, have, we have a lot of dark humor involved I, we've always lyrically in the past uh, with Bolt in particular you know I always wrote about the topic of war it was a constant theme um, always from a maybe a kind of like third person perspective it was never really condemning war or praising war it wasn't about blood guts and and, and gore it's never been about that uh it's always more about the psychological aspects of war which i've found more fascinating really and the historical aspects of it um so i draw a lot on that you know i i, I enjoy uh, military history i'm a big um involved in reading. collector of tanks i like tanks i like tanks Cats and beer, but um, but yeah. To, to, with memoriam, uh, I have almost a free range in what I can um, write about. Uh, with, with the previous band I was in, there was a set formula, uh, and it worked. And um, yeah, we didn't deviate from that, you know, over the career of the band, which was great, you know, and it and it worked and it was good. But ultimately, it was quite creatively um, restrictive in many respects. So I kind of feel a lot freer, a lot more um, expressive with uh, what I can do with Memoriam. So I can write about things that affect my life in general, draw reference from the everyday aspects of things that, that uh, are imp important to me. And I think that's really what gives me the joy is to be able to kind of like get up there on stage and convey these ideas that, that we've had that are important to me as well. Uh, and yeah, I really enjoy doing that, and I think that's an important thing to really be true to yourself. And um, be, as soon as you start being fake or talk about things that you really don't know anything about, people see straight through that. You know, um, we have a lot of fun playing live, and we enjoy what we're doing. And that chemistry and bond that we've got is is really special. And I think that really kind of goes across in what we play. And I think that the audience that see us. We're having a laugh. Yeah. Real good. We're all falling over each other, cables coming out, but well, it's just a real good laugh. So, yeah. so lyric wise, uh, you're talking about lots of, a lot of military history, and you've dealt with, with Paul Thrower and all the stuff, but in memoriam, you also had a really uh, current day stuff, just like, like a song Drone Strike. Strike. Yeah, so, yeah. is it all about, also about this? Nowadays, absolutely, things. yeah, yeah. We, we're kind of moving to the technology. Yeah, we, we are affected by the technology that's around us. We live in a, a world that's dominated by technology. So that was really important for me to write a song about the way that the uh, warfare has changed. Um, uh, historically, a lot of the albums with, with the old band were stuck in the past. Uh, world War One was a big theme. That we, we still retain that within Memoriam as well. I still draw on a lot of the um, military um, history themes. But yeah, I've drawn on, on references to what's going on in the world around us now. And I tend to do that more, more so with, with Memoriam. It's all about direct reference to the world that we live in. So I think it's more, in a way, relevant um, to what the world that we live in. Not just military, though. I, I can, I've got the freedom now to write about other issues that I think are important. So, Such as? So yeah, I, I've involved quite a few. Um, I've made it quite clear in the past. I'm quite... Um, clear and open about my political standpoint as well so I've involved Can you some... talk about it? Oh, to a certain extent, yeah, I will do. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very, very... Um, what do you say? I, I, I'm a strong supporter of Antifa. Uh, I, I, I'm a big... Um, in fear of the way the world is moving with the rise of the right wing across the planet. You know, we see Donald Trump 
in the USA. We see uh, issues in the UK, such as Brexit, the withdrawal from Europe, which all these issues um, affect our, our lives, and uh, not just our lives, the, the, the people in the future. Uh, so I've drawn a lot of direct reference to, to that in the lyrical content of the songs on the last album, and I will be on the next album as well. Um, but yeah, also other issues such as, um, you know, things that directly affect my life. My mother recently in the past year, she's 90 and for 89 years she's been perfectly well. But the last year she's developed dementia. So that's something that really has affected me uh, personally. It's a thing that affects a lot of people as well. Um, so I've written a song about that as well, which will feature on the next album. Um, and I th playing live at the moment as well. Yeah, it's, called, it's called Nothing Remains. Um, and it's about the, the, what happens to your mind. Yeah, so I'm drawing on all these references to real life. Yeah. And I think that the audience that we're playing to, you know, a lot of the audience we play to aren't... They've are, grown up listening to our music, you know, so we kind of, we've pulled them along the way. They've kind of grown up with us, in a way, so they, they can understand these lyrical themes and, you know, agree with the, the lyrical themes. Yeah, I don't have to agree, with, particularly with my political standpoint, I don't ask you to, but I think that I'm in a position uh, in my life, um, it was my 51st birthday, I'm a child of 1966, so it's my 51st birthday, just two, three days ago. Congratulations, Thank player. you very much, I was milking that, I was milking that, uh, and um, yeah, I think I've got to this point in my life where I don't really give a fuck what other people think about me I am quite prepared to stand on my soapbox I think if I didn't get up and um, say what I felt about life and, and the things around me then I'd be doing myself a big disjustice and um, I'm in a very privileged position to be able to do that so I think as, as a, an artist as a creative person I need to uh, to be able to do that and uh, so I am taking this opportunity to um, get up there and say what I feel about life which is great so uh, what, ho <laughs> what, what holds in, in future for Memoriam? What can you tell us, Scott? Well, at the moment, we're uh, currently just um, getting a second album together, which will uh, actually um, have Joan Strike on it. Yes. So, cause, yeah, so that's what quite makes, me, <laughs> makes me laugh, is quite a few interviewers always ask about Joan Strike, and that's not even on the album. So it will be on the second album. We, we, we actually record it. Um, we did it as a demo on the Hellfire demo um, two, and we actually did record it for the last album, but it came to the final cut, and the album was a little bit too long, so we had to drop one of the songs, and we weren't really 100% happy with the way it came out, so that was the song that got lost. So and we'd already got it on it's on the demo on the vinyl and stuff, so. So yeah, we, we got that in the bag for the next album. We've got about four or five songs so far, haven't we? I think we're going to put a little bit of a twist on it this time. Yeah, yeah. try and strike version three. V3. Yeah. So can we uh, expect some kind of uh, tribute to your old uh, history, punk and grindcore, hardcore and all that British stuff? Is, is that something we can expect live or even on the albums? Yeah, um, I think you, 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 you hear elements of, what we, of the old kind of punk sound in what we do. Uh, the ethos and the attitude we have comes from that anyhow. And yeah, I'm not, I'm, at some point in the future, I, I still haven't forgotten the original remit of the, what the band was about in the first place, what was to do cover versions of songs that inspired us to be who we are today. We do a song by Sacrilege uh, when we play live, uh, The Captive. Uh, Sacrilege are a huge, massive influence to us. And we still play that um, to, at this point because we've only done one album, so we haven't got enough songs to do a full hour set. So uh, we, we throw that in just to fill, it, fill out time. And we love it, you know. But I haven't for, we haven't forgotten that, 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 for me, the original concept of the band was to do cover versions. So at some point in the future, we would like to possibly do a full album of songs that inspired us to be who we are. And that would include a couple of songs from, from, from Scott's, you know, kind of like, uh, Think the Band. 90s death metal. Yeah, we'll throw a couple of in there, they're just for good measure as well. But a lot, there'll be a lot of old punk, hardcore, grindcore, crust songs in there that inspired us, anti-sect. You know, Amoebix, lots of old songs that will be in there that uh, the reason that we started doing bands in the first place. I do think the second album is going to be a bit of a different different sound to the first one. We know what we want more now. Yeah. We've been together long enough and we sort of... 
know it works. Getting Sorry. away from some things and getting closer to the actual sound we're, we're trying to achieve. Yeah. I mean, one, one glorious thing about Memoriam is the fact that we haven't got that set formula. We don't think too much about what we're doing. <laughs> we enjoy what we're doing and um, we don't overcomplicate things. We've got a different dynamic. We're a four-piece band. We're prepared to try uh, different things. We've involved samples and things like that on the last album, which is great. Creatively, for me, it's a brilliant place to be in. And um, we're just hoping that we can roll this out, you know, for the next couple of three years and enjoy life while we can. Because, you know, one thing we've learned in life, uh, which you have to take on board, is life is short and uh, you just don't know what lies around the corner. Uh, Martin's lo lost, you know, taught me that, if you want to learn something from that, uh, that experience, is to take something positive forward and to enjoy life to the maximum and do what you can while you can. Don't sit on your backside doing nothing. The only way that you can do things in life is by getting up and making it happen yourself. This is a great opportunity for me to come to the really closing question, or one of them. Um, if I had to get you uh, one, one uh, like uh, advice for generations to come, be it metalhead or not, Scott, what would you say? Uh, don't stop too long in your garage with solving cars. <laughs> And uh, for you, Mr. Willits? Enjoy your life to the maximum you can. Uh, life's too short to uh, think about things too much. Uh, do what you can, when you can. Don't think about the consequences. Just get on, do it, move forward, and live long and prosper. Eat, listen to Memoriam, and don't get too gloomy, even though it's dark as fuck. <laughs> uh, and we are out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and you know what to do. Metal on metal. Metal on metal.